Welcome to this walkthrough video on how to complete um, our arrays and lists exercise 11 or 8.11.4, which is called putting it all together. And this list, um, list, what am I saying? This exercise is all about using lists to uh, simulate sort of a role playing game inventory system where we can have items in our inventory or our bag and we can list these items, we can add items to our inventory and we can use items and we've got to write a sort of a menu to do all of this and the functions that will fulfill each of the options in the menu. So let's just look through the task together. It says here, role play games are very popular and usually involve moving around a location, solving puzzles and collecting items in your inventory or bag. These items can then be stored to use later to help you in the game. Your task, write a program that allows, that should be, you to store items in an inventory for a role-playing game. Your program must, one, be able to add items to your inventory by choosing that option from a menu. The user should be able to type in the name of the item to add after they have selected the add item option. Two, your program should be able to display all of the items currently in the player's inventory by choosing that option from a menu. Three, your program should allow users to use an item from the inventory. This means it's no longer available in the inventory by choosing that option from a menu. Four, display the menu of options again after each choice is made until the user quits by entering Q. Ideally, your program would use unique procedures for each of the inventory actions. You must maintain a single inventory list as a global variable that is utilized by the various action procedures. Okay, so how are we gonna start off? Well, this is all about this inventory list. That is the most important thing. So we're going to need an inventory list which is globally available to all of the procedures. So it needs to be written outside of any one procedure. So let's start off with that inventory. If you prefer, you could just call it bag if that's easier to write. So inventory is a variable. We're going to assign to it a list and that list is going to contain, we'll start off with a few items. So let's use a square bracket uh, because it's a list and let's say uh, we've got maybe an apple um, and maybe a pencil in our inventory to start with. We'll close the list off and there we go. That's our inventory and that's going to be globally available to the rest of the program. Okay, let's have a look. We need to have some sort of menu that's going to show these on the screen. So let's do that. Let's define a function or a proceed. Oh, it would be a function in this case actually because it will return an option. Let's define a function called menu. Uh, so menu doesn't take any parameters and it's going to display something like, I don't know, sort of welcome or, or inventory options or something like that. So let's do this. Print options menu. And I'm just going to go ahead and write some of the various parts of this menu's code now. Okay, so so far this will just print um, the items in our menu and we could run this to see if it works by typing in the name of the function. So we're calling the function in our main block of code again. Whoops, I press run. There we go, that's our option. So yeah, that's working, that's a fine menu. Uh, so now we need to add the code that's going to actually take the option in from the user. So for that, we're going to use input and we're gonna store its value in um, a variable called choice. So let's write choice is equal to input uh, and then we'll say something like please enter your choice. Oops, and I quite like to put a little prompt sign. Okay, so we're gonna take that option in. Now, we already know from when we made our simple menu before um, that we can check that the options that the users typed in are valid. Um, and we can do that by using if, and then we can test if the choice is in a valid options list. So let's do that. In fact, I'm just going to put a little bit of space in so it just looks a bit neater. If choice in, 
And then let's create our list of valid options. So P is one, um, A is one, U is one, and Q is one. Those are our valid options. So if choice is in one of those, it is one of those options, then we can just return choice. So that will then go back to whichever part of the program has called our menu, and it will tell that part of the program what the user entered. Um, otherwise, let's print that is not a valid option. Please try again. And in order for them to actually be able to try again, we have two, well, two ways of doing this. We could either just call menu again, but we would have to return its value. So we, but we can do that. That's something called recursion. That's where you get a function that calls itself. Uh, and that's a neat way of doing it, and that would work. Or there's another way, which is that we could wrap all of this in a while true loop. So all of this will run forever. However, by returning choice, that actually kills the function at that point. So it will stop the eternal loop. Um, but if they don't type in a correct option, we never return choice. We just say it's not valid and it runs around again. So that's possibly conceptually easier to imagine, uh, but both ways work. Okay, so now we can actually um, test this a bit further. So let's say I type a, a sensible option like U. Fine, it finishes. And if I type some garbage, it tells me that's not a valid option. In fact, it's told me it twice because I accidentally pressed the enter key again. But load of rubbish, and this is not a valid option. Please try again. So it's quite hard to see that error message, so I might just stop our code, and I might just put some backslash ends. And if you remember from your string formatting, that means there's going to be new lines surrounding these, which should make it stand out a bit better. Load of rubbish. Yeah, much easier to see. So far, so good. We've got our menu, um, and we've got some validation built into our menu. So we've built a really nice bit of robust code. So this is great. This is a really, really good start. Um, and this is exactly the sort of skill you will need when you're writing your coursework uh, next year. OK. Moving on from here, uh, we want to implement one of the first of our actual um, actions. So this is the one where we're going to... Actually, let's start with uh, displaying all of the items, because that's probably the easiest one to do. So we want to display all of the items in the inventory. So let's have a new function. Let's call it display items. You might think that's not very inventive, but it's extremely uh, well named because it's very descriptive. So new function, display items. I should say procedure, actually. And all this has to do is print everything that's in the inventory list. Well, if we're going to access the inventory list, which is up here, then we need to use the global keyword and inventory. Global inventory. That just tells procedure this procedure that whenever we are going to refer to inventory, we aren't re referring to a local variable, we're referring to the global one so that we uh, make sure we're using these values that are available to us. So, we want to display the item, so uh, let's put something like, um, I don't know, let's put another backslash end so it stands out, inventory contents, and we've got a few ways of doing this. We could print uh, inventory. This will work. Uh, and it might not be the best formatted way, but it will work. Let's test it by just running display items. And it should say inventory contents, Apple Pencil. But we can make this a bit nicer by using a for loop over our list. OK, so um, we should know how to do this. I think we did this um, previously. You should have done this when we did some for loops. Uh, but if you don't know how to do it, then this is a really nice technique. So we're going to use a for loop. And we're going to say for item. Remember that this is just an, a variable of any choosing. We could do for thing in inventory. Inventory being our global inventory. So, and thing being our variable. For thing in inventory print uh, thing. 
Simple. Let's try that. Man, that's nice. I like that. Inventory contents, Apple Pencil. We could maybe make this a little bit more nicely laid out. Um, we could use backslash T. That gives us a tab plus thing. Let's try that. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. Um, it's a bit big. Why don't we try something else? Why don't we do something like uh, space, space, and a hyphen, and a space? Oh, yeah, that looks much better. Okay, inventory content, or contents is apple and pencil. Okay, so that's a, a really simple little procedure, and it's just making really good use of this little for loop so that we can loop over every item in our inventory, and every time we find an item in the inventory, we save its value to the thing variable, and then we can do something with that thing variable, in this case, print it out. Excellent, right, we've done part two, but we do need to now do part one, being able to add items to the inventory. So let's create a new procedure to do this. So def uh, add item. And again, we're gonna make use of the global inventory. And we need to ask the user what it is they want to add. So let's have a variable called item, which is gonna be assigned the output of our input function. And we're gonna say enter the name of the item to add to the inventory. Uh, I use my little prompt. And we can very simply add this to our inventory using inventory dot append, which you should remember from having done the exercises in chapter eight. This is how you add something to a list. So we're gonna append, what are we appending? Well, we're appending what the user has typed in, the response of what they've typed in, which is item, or stored in item. So we're gonna add or append item to our inventory. And uh, we can even tell them that we've done it, so we can say item uh, added to the inventory, exclamation mark. And to prove it, why don't we run display items again? so that it actually shows our updated inventory. So let's prove this works. Let's uh, run add item and see what happens. Enter the name of the item to add to the inventory. Okay, I'm gonna add my phone. Oh, I've got a problem. Inventory is not defined on line 28. Let's look at line 28. Ah, spelling mistake. Inventory, let's run it again. Phone, much better. Phone added to the inventory and it shows uh, display items runs again and it shows Apple Pencil and phone. Fantastic, good. We're really getting through this. So now we need to allow users to use an item from the inventory. This means that the item is no longer available in the inventory uh, by choosing that item from the menu. Okay, so let's do one called uh, use item. So we need to somehow uh, maybe show all the items in the inventory and then ask them which one they want to use. So why don't we run display items again? Because we've already got that function. That already tells us what's in there. And we can just say, well, what's the item you want to use? So again, let's do item equals input what or uh, enter the name of the item you wish to use. And what we should be able to do is test whether that item they've typed it incorrectly or that type item is available. So we can do if item in, ah, I was gonna say in inventory, but I've got a little problem, haven't I? I haven't actually said global inventory, so it's not gonna know which inventory I mean. Okay, now it will. If the item is in the global inventory, then we can uh, print something like um, item uh, used or something like that, or actually no, it might, might be nice to say using 
item, exclamation mark. Um, but if that's not in the inventory, um, then we would say print um, item not in inventory. In fact, why don't we just, again, why don't we use what they've typed in? So something not in inventory. So this should, oh, I've just missed something out, haven't I? It says once you use it, it's no longer available in the inventory. Okay, so we're going to need to use inventory dot remove item. Okay, let's give that a go. So uh, we're going to run use item. And let's see how this works. So inventory contents, apple and pencil, enter the name of the item you wish to use. I want to use the pencil. Using pencil, cool. Uh, and actually probably we should display items again afterwards so we know in our testing whether it's worked. Let's run it again. Pencil, and it's using pencil, and it, then it says inventory contents just apple. Let's try it again with, with some fake data or some inaccurate data, see what happens. So I want to use my banana. Banana not in inventory. Fantastic, that's working really well. There is actually a, uh, something we can do to make this even better. And that is to give uh, a number beside each item. So we might put one apple, two pencil, three badger, whatever it is. And then the user just has to type in the number uh, rather than typing in the whole word, because if the word was quite a long word, it might be difficult to spell it. Or if their first language wasn't English, it might be difficult to spell, and it would be easier to type one, two, three. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, it's, it's going to involve some techniques that are more advanced, um, and the method we've currently got works really well. So if you understand it and you're happy and confident using it, then actually, you know, go with that way. But what I'm going to show is a, is a slightly more advanced way um, that improves the usability, but it is a bit more complicated. So you may just have to think a bit more about how it's working. So I'm not going to erase what I've done. I'm just going to comment it out using three speech marks before it and three speech marks after it. Uh, and then I'm going to just copy paste and I'm gonna I've still got my old version there you see and now I'm gonna tweak this new version so all of this is good so far uh, but I'm not gonna use display items because I want to actually number the items that are in there so I'm going to say uh, for item in inventory print and now I want the I want the number uh, of the index of the item in the list. So if you remember, inventory has got apple and pencil, and that is index zero and index one. So to do that, I can just do print, um, let's see, I'm gonna have to turn it to a string, and I'm gonna get inventory dot index, the index of the item we're currently looking at. Okay. I can add to that um, space and then a hyphen and then I can add the actual text itself. So before I do anything else, let's just see if that works. Uh, I don't need display items on the end. Let's just try running that code. Great, so it's saying we've got zero is apple and one is pencil. Uh, we can improve this a little bit, saying items available for use, and we could just space these in a bit. Let's try again. Oh, I need to do something so it ends. Okay, let's run again. Items available for use, zero apple, one pencil, enter the number name of the items. We'll need to change that. Okay, now, I don't know about you, but I don't like that it starts at zero. I want it to start at one. So we can do that quite easily just by adding one in here. So we're now doing inventory, uh, the 
index of the item in inventory, but one added to it. That was better. One apple, two pencil. So now we need to write the code that's going to allow us to take that item out based on typing the number in rather than typing in the, um, uh, the name of it. So to do that, um, we are going to need to change, first of all, our message. So enter the number of the item we wish to use. And now we're going to have to do some code that tests if that item number is available. So if they've typed in, um, you know, one or two, um, we need to translate those into indexes in our list, zero and one. So the first thing we're going to need to do is take one away from it. Um, and we're also going to have to say, well, is that number within the, within the number of available items? So if they typed in three or four, well, it wouldn't be. Um, it has to be within the size of our list. And fortunately, we can do that. We've learned how to find out the length um, of a list. So we can use that in this. So we can say, uh, let's say choice. If choice is um, less than or equal to the length of inventory, then it's a sensible number. Okay? I'm just going to pass here and I'm just going to put in. But if it's not, we can print. Um, we can print uh, that is not a valid. Uh, option exclamation mark okay let's just run it now and see what happens so far so uh, items available one apple two pencil enter the number of the item you wish to use okay um, I want to use item one okay oh it's telling me off it's telling me off on line 51 because I cannot compare a string and an integer and that's because I didn't stupidly cast choice to an integer before I compared it to the length of the array. Daft. Let's try running it again. Okay, so we want to use Apple, which is number one. And it seemed happy with that. Let's try number two. Still good. Let's try number three then, which shouldn't be permissible. Great. That is not a valid option. Brilliant. This is good so far. Um, I have noticed one other bug though. Let's just try. What if I put in zero? It should. We want it to give us an error, but it won't because zero is less than the length of the inventory. So we're going to need to change this a little bit. And we're going to have to say if int choice is greater than zero and int choice is less than the length of the inventory. This should fix that little problem. Now if I try zero, oops, let me click in there, zero. Yep, that's not a valid option. But one is absolutely fine. Good, so that's our validation. Um, let's now try um, using, let's see what we could do. We could now, we need to actually write the code for using this item. So we've only got the item number. We haven't got the item name, so we can't easily remove it. But we can get the item's name by using that number as the index in the inventory. So, uh, bear with me. Let's see. <laughs> we can do this by saying um, item is equal to inventory, square brackets, because we're referencing it by index number, um, and I want to get the number uh, that the user types in. So that's going to be int choice minus 1 because they'll be typing in 1, 2, 3, when really our, our indexes are 0, 1, 2. And now, 
I should be able to do inventory dot remove item. Well, actually, before I remove it, I want to use it, don't I? So I should be able to do print using um, item and then remove it. Right, we're going to run this and test it. We'll need to display items afterwards to see if it's worked. Okay, I'm going to use the pencil. It says, using pencil, and now my inventory just contains the apple. Brilliant. And uh, let's test it again using uh, doing, we want to use the apple this time. And it now has my inventory confidence sensors just showing I've got a pencil. This is good. This is working really well. I'm really pleased with this. And let's just check our error handling again. So it's try number three. And that's not a valid option. In fact, rather than just saying it's not a valid option, why don't we ask them, why don't we call the function again? This will mean that then they have a chance to, to try again. So let's try that. Okay, I'm going to try, I want to use item three. That's not a valid option. Try again. All right, pencil, using pencil. Brilliant. So we've got pretty much everything done. We've got all of our different procedures for our different functions. Now we just need to wrap the whole thing together in um, a main function that is going to show our menu and depending on the options is then going to call each of the different procedures in turn. So let's define a main function. And main starts by calling the menu but of course the menu returns a choice so we need to save that in a variable which we might as well call choice. So we're going to start off by calling our main menu and saving the choice the user's entered and then we can say if choice is equal to um, now what are our options first one was P then we want to display items and it's quite clear here that we want to display the menu of options again after each choice is made um, so if we we actually want to run the whole gameplay loop again so let's run main again um, elif choice is uh, A to add items so that's add item main again elif choice is U to use an item use item main again elif oops, uh, choice equals Q and we can just say thanks for playing and I've got a little spelling mistake there so just fix that choice so if we want to run our program now we just do main and it should all run let's uh, clear and let's try it options menu let's print the inventory inventory contents apple and pencil Options menu, let's add something to the inventory. Let's add our phone. It says phone's been added to the inventory. And if we print the items again, Apple Pencil phone. Uh, let's add another item. Let's add some cheese. And now I've got four items, inventory contents is Apple Pencil phone and cheese. So let's use something. Let's use the phone. Uh, so let's try number three. And we use the phone. And if I now display my inventory stuff again, it says I've got Apple Pencil cheese, no phone in sight. So let's, uh, let's try some validation. Let's try mm, option D. There is no option D. It should tell us there's no option and let us make a choice again. That's not a valid option. Please try again. Great. Uh, let's try using something that doesn't exist. Uh, so let's try using option number nine. Not a valid option. Very good, okay. So then let's try using what we actually do want to use. So let's try maybe a pencil. 
We've used the pencil, let's print our items again. Apple and cheese is all that remains. Let's try quitting. And it says, thanks for playing, and that's the end. So there you go, we've done it all. Um, every single part of this has now been made. Uh, there are a few improvements we could still make. For example, uh, if I typed in a non-number here, it would crash. Let me prove that to you. I'm going to use, and I'm going to type in H. It will crash because it can't convert H to an integer of base 10, so line 51 will fail. Uh, so we could fix that. And to do that, I can do this special, really special technique. I'm going to try this code. Now, we haven't done try and accept yet, but it's coming up soon. So I'll give you a preview of its functionality. Try to do all of that. If it fails, if we get something called an exception, then what we can do is we can print, uh, please enter a number from the list of options. And we can run use item again from the start. Let me show you how that works. So now we're going to use item. I'm going to try some, some non-numbers. And it says, uh, please enter a number from the list of options. OK, cool. Uh, let's try a number, but this time it's an invalid number. Item is not a valid option. OK, uh, so now I've really got some nice robustness, and I really do have to choose one of the options in the list. So that was a nice little fix I've just added on. Hopefully, that's all made sense to you. Um, it covers a lot of different techniques. Lists, procedures and functions, validation, selection, printing, string formatting, global and local scope, iteration with for loops, iteration with while loops. Um, we've got uh, recursion in there. We've got um, using indexes uh, within arrays and within lists. We've got try and accept. We've got loads of stuff in there. Um, and if you can follow this through and do it, then you really have covered um, everything that we need to know so far this, uh, this year about Python, and you'll be in a really good position moving forward. So I would say that even if you got about, you know, you've, you've watched this and you're still not really sure, keep going. Just work through it again. Read it, uh, read through the task again, follow my code, and try and replicate the code I've written uh, and try and understand what you've done. Every time you come across something new that you didn't know and you've understood it, just put a, a hashtag in and comment it. So, you know, uh, adds uh, the value of item to the global inventory list. Okay, just add some comments so that it makes sense to you when you come back and read it again. But I really encourage you to, um, to if you've got this far and you've got it working, to give yourself a big pat on the back and be really pleased with how much you've learned and how much you've achieved because it is a lot. Um, a lot of different skills uh, and you've had to concentrate and follow for a long time so well done um, and hopefully some of this will go in and you'll be able to use it in your own programs going forward.